welcome to the HubSpot Video Marketing Study Group Office Hours, July 28th. So first things first, let's celebrate our one year anniversary, Corey, because we started Office Hours last July. So now Whoa. it's been 12 months. Yeah, it's been 12 months. So super exciting stuff. It's going to keep growing. Um, so I see more of you guys flooding in. Thanks for coming. If you guys are part of the boot camp, thanks for being here. If you're just attending, hanging out, of course, that's always good too. Let us know in the chat who you are, where you're coming from, what you're looking for in these office hours too. So these are more of an open-ended source to just talk about video stuff. So we're here to discuss, we have a structure every month, but we also, you know, want to make sure that we are answering questions open-ended and uh, just making sure we hit all the bullet points there. So we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves. My name is Aaron Oberdeck. I'm the video marketing manager here at Next City Marketing. And I am Corey. I am a multimedia marketer here at Next City Marketing. Nice. I, we've introduced ourselves so many times. We used to do like fun things, but you know, we're not fun anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll hop right into it. HubSpot Video Marketing Study Group. If you guys have been here before, we've talked about this a lot. But if you're not part of this group, it's an excellent source to just join and talk anything video related. So here you can ask questions about video strategy, video equipment, video post-production, really just anything related to that. And Corey and I will hop in there, we'll answer you. Of course, there's other community members that will also discuss and have conversation as well. So it's just a great place to really orient yourself and um, get some tips and tricks in the video world. Now, if you guys haven't yet registered for our next hug event, we do hugs as well. Now, office hours, these are on a monthly rotation. Hugs, they're on a quarterly rotation. So we typically in the hugs, we discuss Q1 pre-production, Q2 production, Q3 post-production, and then four, Q4, we analyze and we look at the promotion side of everything. So upcoming in our next hug, it's, uh, I believe, August 18th. I can't see the screenshot there. It's super small. Um, but that's going to be all about video production. We're going to talk about shooting tips, how to get started, all the things you want to consider while you're recording, after you're recording the whole nine yards there. So definitely register for our hug event. Those are typically span about an hour long. So we have a lot of material to cover in that. And then the last thing I want to cover is the boot camp for marketing sales and service. The boot camp is an awesome opportunity to learn in depth on how to record video on the marketing side, as well as create strategies and learn how to get uh, all that onset video production experience. So we kind of walk you through not only all your strategy, the equipment you need, how to edit it all, but we also give you concepts, right? We talk you through how to create a homepage video, emails, signatures, testimonials. So it's a lot of value in the boot camp. There is homework, weekly assignments. So we do ask a little bit of work on your end, but at the end of the six week course, you get a certification. Um, so it's well worth it. And really just the, this is for the most in-depth video people. You know, we're looking for people who are really wanting to create videos every day, part of their marketing strategy. So if that sounds interesting, definitely head over to the registration page and sign up there. Hopping over to the next slide here. We'll go over the agenda today. We're going to cover everything audio related. So if you guys got those uh, emails on the, just talking about upcoming, what we're going to speak on, it's going to be very audio equipment focused this week or this month. So we're going to first talk about the equipment and what audio gear you should be utilizing on your video shoots. Then all the audio software options you can use to edit that audio anything audio related Q and A. So there were some questions in the video marketing study group about audio related questions. So we'll go ahead and cover that. And at the end, if you guys have any questions or really just all the way throughout this presentation, feel free to ask questions and we'll stop and answer them as well. All right, so we'll hop through here. This says recommended video cameras. That's obviously wrong because we're talking about audio this week. Corey, you want to go ahead and take it from here and talk a little bit about microphones? Sure, yeah. Um, so this week we are covering microphones, right? And we're going to break this down into, you know, basically a couple different tiers. Um, but to understand kind of what we're talking about, it's useful if we just go over kind of generally some different types of microphones. Um, because I'm going to kind of be referencing these a lot. And when I say things like, a lav, I mean a lavalier or a lapel mic, which are those ones there in the middle. Um, 
So I'll kind of start on the left and I'll work my way over. You do have these here, the dynamic, the condensers. That's going to be something like, you know, one of these guys here, some uh, kind of, yep, exactly. Aaron's got one there. Um, basically, uh, my typically used for recording uh, vocals or dialogue. They're often used in studios and booths and things like that, where you can get very, very close to the microphone. Um, the key thing with audio recording, if you want the absolute best quality recording, is proximity. Proximity is king in audio recording. Basically, the closer that you can get that microphone to the source of audio, uh, the better quality the audio is going to sound and the less of kind of the noise in the background that you'll be getting. Um, so you'll see things like those pop filters on there because they're designed to be used very close to the microphone. Um, then you have things like these lavalier and lapel microphones. These are, um, a, a lapel is in, you know, the color of your shirt. These are microphones that are typically worn. As you can see, it has, uh, like the one on the left there has a wire coming off of it. Uh, it'll be clipped up on your shirt. The wire can be run usually underneath your shirt um, and kind of down to either something like a little uh, personal audio recorder or to, a wireless transmitter, something like those little wireless packs right there, the road packs, um, that can then be transmitted over to your camera or audio recorder from a distance. So that can be really useful if you're moving around or things like that. Um, the audio is traveling with your host or with your speaker. So you're getting that really clean, constantly close audio. Um, the issue with these, because they're worn on the body, the second you start moving, or if you've got a lot of clothing or hair or anything, it's going to cause kind of rustling and things like that. Um, so, you know, there's pluses and minuses to each of them. Um, the one over on the end, this is what would be called a shotgun or a boom microphone. These um, typically are boomed in. They are held in on a pole, usually above the actors or uh, the subject. And you'll see them kind of come in on an angle. Um, you can see those kind of lines coming up and down the, the side of the microphone there. That is off-axis rejection. So basically that is helping to focus the microphone um, and receive less of the kind of uh, noise coming from the outside of it. So it really minimizes things like noise of wind and kind of just stray outside sounds and things like that. You can get a really nice like... Um, they call it a dead cat or a, a furry wombat. They have tons of those fun names for them, but really big, fuzzy, like Zeppelin style blimps to go over it um, and protect yourself from wind. And you can get that really, really crisp audio. Um, the lavalier and the shotgun both are designed for movement, right? They're designed for someone who's able to walk around or be in different sets and kind of go places. The dynamic condensers, those ones on the left, that's a studio. It's a, it's a set mic. You're not moving. You're in one place, right? Um, so we can go to the kind of the next page here and I'll take you guys through what our recommendations are for, we broke it down into entry level, mid level and high level, um, audio equipment. And these are just kind of some offerings just to kind of show you guys what's available in, um, the marketplace right now. So your entry level recording for this, we basically assumed, you know, it's going to be whatever the easiest option is. Everybody has a cell phone, right? So these are two different types of cell phone options that you can use. Uh, the one on the left is a Saramonic smart mic. They're about $40 or so for the iPhone one. I think the Android one is even cheaper. It's like 20 bucks. Um, it's just a little capsule mic, right? It's similar to a little shotgun mic, like a little teeny tiny one that you can just click onto your phone. Um, and basically it's it's just getting a better general audio quality um, than what the little tiny mics in your camera are capable, or in your phone are capable of, right? Um, these are really great. Uh, they're really great for versatility and just kind of general purpose stuff. If you're relying on your cell phone for things, it kind of makes your audio a little nicer. On the right over here, we have the Rode Smart Lav. So this is basically just a lavalier that plugs right into your phone. Um, again, you know, you can get this thing clipped right up here. You get that nice close audio. So it's going to sound really, really clean. They're like $55 or so. They're really not too bad. Um, you know, you got to get creative with hiding the wire, clipping it or other things. There's um, a, a kind of industry secret of you can make a little triangle out of tape and kind of stick the mic between two triangles and it'll cause it to have a little natural bit of 
kind of tape protection that you can then stick underneath your shirt or on a collar or something. And then it won't get as much kind of fabric noise and stuff. Rode also makes like little covers and all sorts of things that you can get for these just to kind of add protection if you ever need it as well, which is fun. Um, but you know, those are, those are kind of those ones, um, stepping it up from there. This is when you're starting to get into more of those kind of, you know, upgraded quality. You're starting to film on, you know, DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, like that little Lumix over there on the side. Um, this is when you're going to be looking for something a little bit more dedicated, right? So on the left, this is the Tascam dr 10 l These things are great. I've got a couple of these myself. Um, there's a few other ones like the Rode. There's there's a couple that of these out there. Basically, it is a lavalier microphone with just a recorder built on. So you don't have to worry about transmitting audio or wiring it to extra recorders or anything like that. It's pretty easy. You stick a micro SD card in there. The battery, it's one AAA and it'll run for like 10 hours. And they really do. It's not like 10 hours and like 20 minutes later, it's dead. It's It'll last you all day long, which is awesome. Um, they can be hidden really easy. It, the device itself is, you know, pretty small. It'll fit in your pocket pretty, pretty simply. And it's 48 kilobit or uh, kilohertz, 24 bit audio. So it's really high quality audio files, which is great. Um, on the right, this is a Rode Video Micro. So this is basically like a, a compact little shotgun mic that just goes right on top of your camera. Um, it has one of those fuzzy wind mic covers that comes with it, so it's nice and protected. You're not getting all the wind noise or the handling noise, all that stuff. Um, and it just plugs in with just a little 3.5 millimeter jack. These things are great. Um, they're not compatible with all cameras. Some of them need, you know, power and stuff like that. So always double check, you know, what you are using it with and what you plan to plug it into. But these are a really great option um, just to kind of get better audio than what your camera has, right? So then our next level is the, uh, the high end, right? So this is when we start to get into, you know, if you notice that it's all one brand in these photos, it's all Sennheiser. Um, you start to get into a, a certain level of quality that there's not as many players in the game. Um, the ones on the left over here, the Sennheiser G4s, these are like the, you know, gold star quality in wireless lavalier mics. This is what most television and things like that. Like this, these things are super, super popular for that. They're really great quality um, and they have really strong transmission. Um, you do have to have something to record it to, right? It doesn't have a built-in recorder. So you have to get, you know, uh, some type of XLR recorder or something like that. And that's on our next slide, we'll deal with that. But kind of moving to the next two ones, this is where you get into things like this uh, MKE 600. This is a, you know, solid shotgun microphone. It is isolating your sound. It is resisting a lot of noise, handling issues and things like that. Um, it has a hypercardio or a super cardioid pickup, which means it's very, very narrow and it's going to be really trying to like aim in at its subject. Um, these aren't too great indoors uh, because they tend to echo just a little bit. So it's something to just kind of consider. That's why lavalier mics tend to be really nice inside because you can just kind of clip it on and call it a day. Um, but if you're looking for the best of both worlds, that is what this mic is on the right-hand side. This is an MKH-50. This is like the dialogue mic of dialogue mics. If you want the best, crisp, most awesome sounding audio indoors, um, and even probably outdoors with proper wind protection as well. Um, these mics are great. They are really, really high quality audio. They've got a great resonance, great body to it. Um, and it just, they sound really nice. They're a dream to work with. They, you know, the price is commensurate with the, the quality at that point. Um, but this is, like I said, this is the standard. This is what, you know, most audio techs will have in their bag at that point. It's probably one if. All right, we lost Corey. So uh, let's see. He's coming back. There we go, Bevy. Hey. Okay. <laughs> so that was fun. All right. Um. So we can go to our uh, next page there if you'd like to. And this is just kind of recording devices and just audio equipment here. I put. Um, on the left, these are two kind of very common audio recorders. This is a Tascam DR40X. They're about 200 bucks or so. I have one of these as well. Um, 
this is something where if you're using those lavalier microphones or you're using a boom microphone, right, you need something to connect that microphone to. So this is a dedicated audio recorder. So it's going to be a really, really high quality file, very low noise, um, and, you know, things like leveling and all that kind of fun tools and just better quality preamps than what would be in your camera, for example. Um, the Tascam is kind of the, the entry level. It is, you know, uh, not super, super flashy. If you're looking for kind of the next step up from that, you're kind of getting back into that high end. That's when you're looking at things like that. Sound devices, Mix Pre 3, those are like super awesome. They're really high quality recorders. Um, they have a lot of really interesting like auto gain features and stuff. Um, just really neat product. And again, you can see quarter 20 mounting and things like that. They're, they're, they're set up pretty well for kidding out. Um, and then on the right, I just have some headphones, right? Some, some good recommended things to have. The MDR 7506s by Sony, those are like Again, that's the industry standard. You go into any edit bay, you go into any college, you go, you know, most places where you find audio equipment, MDR 7506s are there. I have mine in the closet over here. Um, another affordable alternative to those, these Sonals, the SMH-1000s, I believe Aaron has a pair of those sitting right next to him. These are kind of just like a, a slightly more affordable, I think they're like half the price, so they are more affordable, but very similar quality. It's, you want that nice big, they look goofy, they look, you know, like they haven't changed since the 80s, and there's a reason for that, like, because that's that quality kind of isolating sound that you want, and they, it really is just like a really good um, known quality, so it, it's great for mixing and for reviewing audio, and even out in the field as well. Yeah, absolutely. I can confirm they do look pretty big and goofy as well when you wear them, but uh, <laughs> they're comfortable, so that's okay. It is right. what it is. Yeah, exactly. They're they're nice and plush. They're meant for if you've got to wear, you know, a pair of headphones for eight hours, like you, you can wear those for eight hours without, you know, your ears hurting or having earbuds stuck in that won't ever come out again. Yeah, for sure. So we're going to hop over. Thank you for covering that, Corey. I know that was a lot oh, of technical sure. information as well. So if you guys have any questions throughout the rest of the presentation, please throw that into the chat and we're happy to clarify anything that we talked about there. Moving over to audio software, right? So we talked about equipment, low end, mid end, high end recording devices, microphones, everything like that. So how do you go into editing this, uh, you know, all of these audio files and whatnot? And Typically, you can do that within your video editing software. You know, Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro, uh, DaVinci Resolve, these all have audio editing editors inside of them. But if you want to take it another step, you really want to focus on some, some audio editing software. Here's some, we have a few options that we're going to kind of talk about. And first is uh, Descript Studio Sound. Now, Descript is a video editing platform, so I want to make sure that I say that first and foremost. But... Descript has a feature called Studio Sound, and the engineers over at Descript did an amazing job at being able to use AI to detect certain frequencies that we don't want in our audio recording and just remove those. So if you record, let's say, on any sort of phone device without uh, an audio, without a microphone, right? Typically, you're going to have some sort of background noise, you know, whether it's cars passing, you know, your air conditioning turning on. There's so many things that you don't think about that your phone or your audio device is going to pick up. And so when you start to listen back on your audio recordings, you're going to notice all of those sounds if you're wearing proper headphones. So as you hear all of those sounds, we want to eliminate those sounds and we can go into all of these ed audio editors we can pull out those frequencies and we can do it manually. And it's a lot of work. And with Studio Sound, they've kind of made a one-click button to remove all of that stuff. So it's very much not only a one-click enhancement, but it also does audio restoration. So it takes the frequencies that it does want to pick up and it'll enhance and restore those certain frequencies as well. So uh, we can move on here. I actually have a, a Studio Sound example that I wanna show off here. I don't know if we can't hear that because I need to unmute it that. It is muted, yeah. Yeah. There you go. And let me turn it up there for us. Not too loud. 
business without serious When the New York World's Fair opened its gates to the world, it was apparent from the beginning that General Motors highways and when the New York World's Fair opened its gates to the world, it was apparent from the beginning that General Motors Highways and Horizons exhibit. So you can see it automatically takes that that high frequency pitch that you hear. It's it's very thin, but it removes that. Also, it can remove the music, as you can see. So it's it's really impressive. It's not perfect by any means, but it is for one click button and just to kind of restore your audio, repair your audio very quickly, it's a great option. And we utilize it a lot at Next to Me. So I wanted to talk about that first and foremost, but jumping over to some other audio editing programs that we're going to talk about, there's Adobe Audition. That's just going to give you a lot more opportunity to edit your audio um, versus Adobe Premiere, which is that video editor. You also have Audacity. Adobe Audition has been around forever too. Uh, yeah. Before, this is one of those, it's showing my age of, of how long I've been doing this, but before it was called Adobe Audition, it was Cool Edit Pro. Um, and Cool Edit Pro was like, it was revolutionary in the early 2000s for the things that you could do, like literally waveform editing of audio and like redrawing mm -hmm. things. Um, and Adobe saw how good Cool Edit Pro was and they bought it and made it Adobe Audition. Um, and like nice. I, I worked at a radio station in 2000 and I don't want to admit how long ago, uh, 15, 20 years ago almost, um, that that was what we used to cut all of our commercials. We used Cool Edit Pro and it was like all of our content was edited with that. And that's been around in the industry for, yeah, forever. And now it's labeled as Adobe Audition and it's integrated into all those Adobe products, which is great. Remember when the the logo was like a bright green? It was like a electric volt color. Now oh, it's yeah. just that 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 mute purple. Um, you also have other programs, right? You have Audacity, Pro Tools, you have Logic, even GarageBand is an audio editing platform. Audacity is free as well. It's open source. Mm -hmm. That's another one that like college radio stations all around the country use Audacity. For sure. So these are just, you know, examples that we wanted to let you know and give transparency into how many editing programs are actually out there. Now, moving over to the video bootcamp questions. So we get a lot of questions throughout the study group, through whether it's bootcamp, just, you know, we like to cover and highlight a few of the questions. So obviously everything's audio related this month. So we picked up a few of the audio questions we had in the study group, and we want to cover those now. So the first one is, I have a microphone plugged into my camera, but the audio still has a lot of background noise. How do I reduce noise while recording with a microphone? And Corey touched on this uh, at the very beginning of the presentation. And it's you're going to hear it's a very repeated um, answer when we cover all of, of these questions. It's all about proximity. You know, if you have a microphone, but you're still 10 feet away from your subject, you're still going to pick up other sounds because you're so far away. So you want to make sure that you're as close as possible to the subject. Obviously, you don't want to be in the frame and you can see the microphone, but just add a frame, making sure that that microphone is as close as possible without being in frame, right? So that's kind of you your, your just on the outside of it. Like if you ever watch like people booming yeah. in, it is directly just out of frame to where if they were to tilt up just a little bit, you'd see it. Um, so they try to get it as absolutely close as possible. Yeah. If you watch any television shows, if that camera bumped up even a millimeter, you would start to see the very bottom of the microphone. And so, on some bad TV shows, you do. Yeah, that's very true. Um, all right. So hopping over to the second question here, what's the difference between a lavalier microphone that costs several hundred dollars versus one that's cheap? And the answer again is more about that proximity. You know, if you have a super cheap microphone, you need it very close because that the gain, the pickup on it is very low. You're not going to achieve getting the sufficient audio that you want through a cheap microphone if you're not very close. Now, kind of conversely, if you have a more expensive microphone, you can clip it a little farther away and you'll still pick up a higher frequency range there uh, with those more expensive microphones. But at the end of the day, it's more about that proximity than the actual quality of the microphone. You know, if you pick up a cheap mic, as long as you're doing all of your preparation work beforehand at the best of your abilities, and you're doing that as optimal as possible, your microphone is the quality is actually the, the lowest thing that you're looking for. Right, Corey? Oh, for sure. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, you know, a $3,000 microphone boomed from five feet away is going to sound terrible. 
a two hundred dollar mic six inches mm-hmm. away is going to sound golden. Like yeah. it, it all depends on how close you can get that mic. And again, at a certain point, there's diminishing return of you know how how expensive does it need to be? Um, yeah. You know, admittedly, most of us don't need these six, seven hundred, eight hundred dollar mics. Like a clip on mm-hmm. lavalier, like a $200, nice, decent little mic or something, or even, you know, uh, uh, if we're doing a lot of web-based content or something, something like a blue Yeti or something just really mm-hmm. close and, and in proximity is always going to sound better than an expensive option further away. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And then we'll hop into the last question here before we answer Q and a, when should I use a boom microphone versus a lavalier microphone? Right. And that's really, I mean, there are scenarios where you want to pick and choose certain ones. It is also a little bit of preference, right? You know, do you want to see the lavalier microphone clipped onto the shirt? A lot of people don't like that. They think it's ugly, so they want to avoid that. So they'll put a boom. But obviously, with a boom microphone, that distance and that proximity is huge. You know, with a lavalier microphone, you can clip right here, and you don't have to worry about not picking certain frequencies up where if you have a boom mic, you're moving it around a little bit. If your audio engineer gets tired, his arms are moving a little bit, you know, that's really where you start to see your audio levels start bouncing a little bit. So it's kind of situational, but, uh, you know, in personally, I like the boom mic because I don't really like to see that loft clip. If it's a very professional shoot, right, we're really focused on making sure we boom it correctly and optimally. If we're doing a quick shoot and we just want to put a lav mic on someone, I, we, we really don't have any problem with that. But again, I think it's more just personal preference. Corey, you have anything to add there? Yeah, I mean, definitely if you're if you're outdoors, um, a boom mic with wind protection on it, again, make sure you mm-hmm. get a nice big fuzzy like the Zeppelin or a dead cat or something on there. Something really nice and fluffy to prevent any wind sound. That's about as, as good as you're going to get. Um, yeah. 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 Um, when to choose one versus the other. I mean, like I, I said, boom mics can, you know, certain shotguns can be a little echoey indoors. Mm. There are times that lav mics will sound a little better because of that. Um, but certainly, I mean, you know, there is a, there's a microphone for every job. If you are inside and yeah. you want, you know, a shotgun style boomed in microphone, get something like that MKH-50 uh, or the Cause 11 ds There's a, a few different microphones out that are, you know, very short capsules that can be maneuvered indoors really well um, that maybe aren't great outside, aren't great against wind and things like that, but they sound golden inside. Um, yeah. So it's, it's the right tool for the job. Uh, if you can, there's also no excuse to run both of them. Uh, if yeah. you can hide a lavalier mic on someone, and then also boom it, you now have two sources of audio. So if something happens, if the boom battery dies, or if a lav goes out or whatever, you have redundancy. Um, yeah. That's a That huge is the way that note. most things are. Yeah, mo- that's the way that most television and films are going to be done. And you'll be surprised, but like most movies and TV shows, they're wearing lavs and they hide them. Mm-hmm. They, it can be hidden in hair. It can be in collars. It can be under clothing. Like, there are there are sneaky sneaky ways to hide them. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing that you'll notice is that the audio source of a lavalier is very particular. It sounds very close. So if you're in a big outside open field in a wide shot, right, and you're you're having a conversation, close audio is going to almost sound weird. You kind of want yeah. to hear the Unnatural. sound. You want to hear the environment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So it it's very particular. This is when you get into like splitting hairs on things. But you know, at the end of the day. It's about the quality of the recording, the legibility right. of what people are saying. So that proximity and making sure you have something. So if you've got an option to boom it and love it, just do it. You know, it, it's better to have um, more audio to choose from than less. Absolutely. I think the that's a great point because, you know, you never know what's going to happen while you're mic, you know, you're, you have someone mic'd up, right? And if they're moving a lot while they're speaking, you might not anticipate that while recording, right? As you set the love up on them, you know, they might be very relaxed and not moving a lot, but as you hit record, people get nervous in front of the camera, right? There are some people get even like deer in headlights and move way too much. So it's really yeah, just- Not everybody's an actor. It's not yeah, easy absolutely. To, so, to perform on camera. And just from personal experience, you know, one of our most recent video shoots, we had that situation where we had a lav mic and you anticipate that the lavalier microphone is going to just produce better audio overall. 
But then we put the lav mic on him and he started moving a lot and his jacket was swishing around and it picked so much of that up in the lavalier microphone. But the shotgun microphone we had right above at a frame didn't pick nearly as much up. Running it through studio sound, it really just perfected that audio. And so luckily we added that boom after the lavalier was already attached. And we're thankful that we did because that produced the higher quality audio at the end of the day. So don't be afraid to uh, double microphone someone up. And we are at 430 already, but uh, if you guys have more questions, feel free to join the video marketing study group. We are like 10 people away from hitting a thousand. So if you haven't registered for that, definitely go check out the study group, ask questions there. Corey and I are there and we're answering them all the time. So feel free to ask anything there. And thanks everyone for coming. I guess we'll hang out for a minute. If anyone has questions, I see, you know, we, we got a number of people joining us as well throughout the last half an hour. So if anyone has any questions, we'll hang out for a minute, answer those. If you guys don't, yeah, thank you so much for coming to the office hours.